Hello there, everyone. Uh, this is a pretty casual stream. Um, probably more casual than some of the other ones we've done in the past few Saturdays. Uh, the reason I say that is because we're not starting a new game this time. We're actually just continuing from my existing save file. And as you can see, this game is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Uh, this game is essentially kind of a prequel to Breath of the Wild, although I have heard things that it also isn't at the same time. Spoilers. But it's pretty straightforward as far as what it's trying to do, which is both being a sequel and a prequel to do two different games. Uh, the other being, of course, the original Hyrule Warriors. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be playing this. We're going to get a little bit farther in the game. I did say that I was going to do this stream and try to play for longer. Um, so I did start it earlier than I normally would. But, you know, I don't know if we're going to really end up doing that much longer than we normally do. Um, but we'll try. So... Uh, there's not really much else to really say right now. Let's just, uh, kind of get in here. So the cool thing is that I've done a lot of stuff. Like, a lot, a lot of stuff. But, as you can see, there's a ton of crap on this map to do. And from the sounds of it, I'm not actually that far into the game. Um, I can try to tell you a little bit about what kind of has happened. Oh, we got some weird screen tearing in there, so that's great. I don't know why that's happening. Um, I don't think that there's anything I can do to get rid of it right now. Uh, short of like turning, turning this off and op reopening everything. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to, you know, we're going to get through this. <laughs> There's more where that came from. So I basically just added an extra stamina bar to Kaposa, which is a character that we've already unlocked. Um, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed with that weird... Did it go away? Like, it looks like it went away. No, it's still kind of there faintly. I don't know how uh, much that's going to affect the gameplay. Uh, I don't think it will, but you never know. Um, so what I was saying is that we kind of met some characters. I think if I go to my menu, I can kind of show you who I have right now. Um, so I, well, there's a lot more than these characters that I got. Change character. Yeah, so here's, here's all the characters I have. I have Link, I have Impa, I have Zelda, Mipha, Hestu, Urbosa, Reveille, or Bawali, whatever you want to call him, and Daruk. Daruk is actually pretty okay. He's probably the easiest character to play because he has, like, a unbreakable shield that you can use. Uh, Revali is more about the kind of speed um, and combination of kind of like bow and arrow attacks. Rebosa is all about lightning uh, abilities and whatnot. And Hestu has Maracas, uh, probably my least favorite character as far as like combat goes. Um, there's some interesting stuff that he has, but like, you know, whatever. Or it. I don't know if it's a he because it's a plant. Mipha is a Zora, I think. Um, she has a trident. She's got some cool powers and stuff, but I kind of find that her powers are very AoE based and they are fun. They're similar to kind of a Rosa, but they're a little bit, um, I don't know. They're, they're not my favorite. Zelda's abilities are... Uh, they're, they're okay. But I haven't unlocked any, like, crazy, crazy combos yet. And also, I'm very terrible at 
running these combos. Uh, Impa is probably one of my favorites, although she is a little complex to use because you can summon these kind of clones um, of yourself, which can basically help you deal a little ton of damage. And then of course we have Link, uh, probably our most powerful character, obviously from the level you can tell that he's someone we play a lot. He's currently, um, so this game is not a puzzle solving game in the way that previous Zelda games are. This is a spin-off like The Last Hyrule Warriors, which is um, itself a spin-off of something called uh, Dynasty Warriors. Um, also, the, the gameplay is called Musou. Um, and basically, it's an action game. It's a button mashy, you know, hack and slash action game is really what it, what it is. With a little tiny little bit of RTS flair. Uh, being able to manipulate other characters on the map and having to take out uh, specific choke points or you you can almost think of them as like capture the flag kind of sections um, they do throw in because this is uh, a much more well blended I guess version of Hyrule Warriors it seems to take on more elements of Breath of the Wild than um, well than other games have. I mean, you're playing literally on the same map, but there, again, there aren't really any puzzles to solve. Like, there are some hidden items you can find, and technically, I guess you could say that, like, finding the recipes and materials to unlock new challenges and whatever is kind of there. Um, but it's, it's kind of a straightforward game, really. Uh, yeah, there's. We're gonna have to just accept that there's some screen tearing, and that I didn't foresee that changing the resolution would have caused this. So it sucks, and I am really sorry for anyone who sees it and thinks that it's just a big, ugly, weird line across the screen. But because we're live, there's not much I can really do for it right now. Uh, it comes and goes, it seems, and sort of like. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just have to... We'll just have to see what we can do. Uh... I... I we could try to restart the console, but I, I don't know if that will work, because I think I've tried that before. So the question is, what do we want to do? Uh... Basically, the, the main things that are around that we can do are these, like, side challenges. I've been doing a lot of the side challenges in this game trying to finish all the side stuff, get a bunch of materials. Most of these are pretty easy. Um, oh god. <laughs> so that probably is a pretty crazy challenge right there. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to do this one, but we're going to swap Link out for Mifa. I wish to keep we need to level her up a little bit. And the cool thing is you can cook, sort of. You you just collect items from missions, and you can use these items to give you bonuses, such as experience for yourself or your weapon. Your weapons do level up and get more powerful. You can also fuse weapons together to make more powerful versions of the same weapon. Um, there's no breakage in this game, like actual Breath of the Wild, um, which is nice, but. Uh, it does get a little confusing because of how fusion works for weapons, so there is kind of a way to min-max them and make them super, super powerful. But I think because we are wanting to get Mipha up a little bit more for that other challenge, we're just going to use a meal effect that gives her, gives us plus 7%. Uh, what does the mission say? We can always look at the mission info. It says, a swarm of monsters appeared here. On the outskirts of Goron City, Daruk, uh, confident in his abilities, take up, takes up arms and fights on behalf of all the Gorons. So we can play different versions of this challenge, essentially. We can do easy, we can do normal. I've been doing all the challenges mostly on normal. Um, some of them are time-based. Uh, some of them are defeat a certain number of enemies. Some of them are defeat a certain kind of boss, etc., uh, etc., etc. But... They do vary enough 
And it looks like we do get another piece of equipment. So there are equipable items for Link mainly, uh, costume pieces. Although I do know that there are costume pieces for the other characters, I just don't have them yet. So let's do this one. I think what we're going to do is immediately switch to Mipha, just to help her level up a little bit. Either that or she'll level up during play. So yeah, we've done a lot of challenges. Nine story missions, 32 side missions, and 73 dialogue? Maybe that's just other stuff. Possibly upgrades. I do like the art design of this game. It's very close to Breath of the Wild. It's not exactly the same. There, it does seem a little bit more washed out. Um, is maybe what I would say. Uh, so that line isn't too. Oh, yeah, that's that does suck. Seems that the line comes and goes, which is fine. Yeah, so this one has nothing to do with capturing, uh, or has nothing to do with a timer, it is strictly just capturing stuff. Um, so if we want, we can switch to Mifa and capture a point. We've already been through this area before, so there isn't really um, a whole lot of collectibles. So Daruk is just going to do his own thing, we're going to do our own thing. You can also leap and jump off walls and glide, which I don't really know what purpose that serves. Uh, sometimes I've seen it kind of help in combat. I think I have her strongest weapon equipped right now. Cool. Yeah, I'm really, again, really sorry for the weird uh, weird screen tearing. Not much I can do. Um, usually I'm on top of this kind of stuff. But, you know, just bear with me. You know, it, it's not too bad. The game still seems to be running appropriately. I do button mash in this game a little bit, just because it's not a difficult a uh, terribly difficult game. <laughs> so there's a whiz robe, which I hate fighting. I think they're kind of annoying. Uh, if you if you fight them appropriately, there are ways to not. Uh, what you're seeing is the little hexagon is a basically like armor, and when you break it, you deal or do have the potential to deal massive damage. Um, and usually, it's when they use an attack that makes them vulnerable uh, and it's pretty easy to kind of telegraph like the way that he just cast a fireball. The problem is that the window does kind of disappear very quick and the wizard rope guys kind of just dance around the place and are one of the more frustrating enemies in this game. It is done. So we killed the wizard rope, we got some extra stuff. Um, there's some Octa Rocks or whatever the heck the fire versions are. We're just gonna capture another point. We don't tend to like micromanage a lot of the NPC characters that fight alongside you that much because they they tend to be pretty self-reliant. Um, very rare cases would I need to actually control them or get them to move a certain way, depending on the complexity of the map. Um, the interesting thing is that. It does use the same map for certain uh, zones and areas. So there tends to be like one really large map for most uh, corners of the Breath of the Wild area and a couple smaller maps inside of it. But 
The only downside is that because there's so few different maps, um, I imagine there's more variety later on, but like right now, there isn't really a whole lot of variety. It's like when we're just moving around, the screen tearing thing is not really happening. It's only when we start attacking that the screen gets all, f all fucked. Um, again, not much I can do. Um, we'll, we'll make do with what we got. I definitely will <laughs> learn from my own mistakes and kind of make sure that when I uh, change the resolution that I reset OBS so it doesn't cause this issue, which seems to be something to do with the capture card that I have, being that it's kind of like this Chinese knockoff thing. Um, I use it because it ha happens to have, like, extremely low latency. So, like, I don't even play with a second screen. I'm actually just using, playing through OBS. It's that, has that low of a latency that a button mashy kind of game like this, that does require at least a little bit of maneuverability, is actually um, not too bad to do. I actually have tested uh, Borderlands 3, and that's a shooter, and you would expect playing a shooter with even any additional latency would be difficult, but it turns out that it's not actually that bad. So, another whiz robe, or fire whiz robe. And use our kind of critical KO thingy. So it's not actually, wasn't the capture point itself. We're just doing that for extra materials and, um, oh, and we can use our ultimate. So on my end, this game looks kind of okay. Um, the problem with recording from the Switch is that the Switch outputs a very, you know, 1080p signal. Like, it's it doesn't do anything any fancy. Um, and even though I am outputting to 720 30, um, I'm just kind of concerned that it might look a little bit muddy. But it seems to be running fine here. If there's anyone in the chat, feel free to discuss things, like, you know, how was Christmas? Christmas was only, like, yesterday, so you guys must have something that was of note or kind of awesome. Although this Christmas, it has been a bit strange and different from the previous ones, so I kind of get it if uh, it's not exactly up to snuff. So I kind of didn't really... Oh, the other thing is I don't... Oh, is Duruk having a problem? Um, no, he's not having a problem, actually. He's fine. I think he was just letting me know that he was ready to use his ult. So the last... Uh, place that I got to capture is like really far across the map. But luckily Mifa, Mifra, Mifa, I can't remember her name. Um, she travels pretty quick. I don't necessarily like using Dar Daruk a lot of the time because I feel like he's a very slow character. He does hit like a truck, but he's just not the most mobile, and I prefer characters that are much faster. Um, that can kind of just dart around. Link is sort of a happy medium where he doesn't move super quick, but he does get there pretty fast. And uh, because we have already killed a whole bunch of extra dudes that we didn't need to, I'm not really worrying about attacking any of these guys. Um, also, <laughs> I was potentially going to be playing Yakuza Like a Dragon because I do like the Yakuza games. I have a lot of them, not all of them. And I was especially excited for that one because I got it for Christmas. And it was, or it is a game that is very goofy, very strange, but also very different to some of the previous Yakuza games. It has the same charm, the same kind of Shenmue-esque uh, kind of gameplay, um, but it's taken away the action RPG format and replaced it with a JRPG, which is really cool because a Yakuza Final Fantasy to me sounds like really awesome. Uh, so I'm guessing there's a boss on this end because of all these dumb fire things. I mean, who knows, maybe it's 
Not the case. So we got two guys that we gotta kill in here. I find the f elemental kind of moblins a lot harder to do. Um, so yeah, if you do a really well-timed dodge, then you can do the slow-mo attack, which I'm really bad at timing, but if you dodge often enough, then odds are you will probably end up dodging an attack. And that didn't kill him, I'm very surprised it didn't. But this will. We still have the other Moblin to fight our Moblin. Um, yeah, so uh, it's a pretty chill day today. Um, basically just clean up from last yesterday. Uh, and got some cool stuff. Um, a lot of really kind of, you know, semi-practical things. Not everything I got was practical, but you know, it doesn't always have to be. And I'm not, I'm actually someone who likes impractical gifts, but... There we go. So that, the screen sharing is not too bad. It is noticeable. It's just, you know... Again, something we gotta deal with. So I hope that levels, levels are up. It does, she's exactly level 25, which is what we needed. Uh, oh god, is there a mission that I'm thinking of that I didn't do? I can't remember. So we've got some new weapons. A lot of the time these um, come with abilities or they don't. Uh, basically, a weapon has a max level of 20, and every five levels it gains a new statistical uh, effect. And I think the maximum effects you can have on a single weapon is four. Every weapon has some default ones that they come with, or if they don't, um, they will gain them eventually. My only problem with them is... well... It, um, is that if you mess up on a weapon that you've been fusing for a while, it's very costly to regain all of those materials. So I got a whole bunch of different stuff for her. I even got a new rusty halberd, which I actually know where to take that, which is really cool. Uh, we got an ethereal stone. That's pretty awesome, not sure what that's for. And we unlocked the flamebreaker boots. So Link now has a new costume. Kind of in a, a very tired state, I would say, right now. I haven't, I didn't do a whole lot today, but I did get some stuff done that I was happy to, to have. Sometimes when you finish one of these side missions, these side challenges, um, you do get a whole bunch of new icons that pop up on the map. Right now, it seems like we're, we're just kind of stuck with the ones we already have, but there is quite a few all these ones with the swords are the ones that we can do. I know that there's one that I couldn't finish because it was just too hard. And also there's a much easier... Uh, Octopolish is what we want. Because we want to see if we can get a really nice, powerful... Thing. So you can choose a bunch of these different stones. I think the uh, more rarity that you apply them to, the... Uh, actually, I don't know if the rarity really matters, honestly. So I only need five of those. And then I need five, uh, 30 of one of these, which we're going to use the Lozalfo's tail, because we just have lots of them. Actually, I wonder if I go backwards. Nope, it wants me to only go forwards. Uh, use all. Cool. And then we have one more, which is these weird document things. We need a hundred of them. I think we're just going to use this one. 
powerful. So he's going to polish the rusty weapon and we might get something really powerful. We might get something kind of unique. Ooh, that that is cool. Zora's Spear. This is a Zoro's weapon of choice. It's lighter than it looks due to being made of very special metal. And it is used by Zoro for both fishing and protecting their own. So it deals 34 damage as a level 1 weapon, which is funking crazy. Um, so we may consider using it for fusion, because it is very close to our most powerful weapon. So the way that this fusion stuff works is that the f every five levels you can fuse, well you can fuse at any point, but the best thing to do is to choose, um, no I actually apparently already had some of the sort of weapons. You basically can choose like the, the, the first, hmm, how do I explain this? I'll just, I'll just show you. So we picked a weapon that we want to, well, not that one. So we picked a weapon that we want to fuse items to. Uh, doesn't, oh, it has dash plus seven. And what we can do... Well, let me try this again. This is the weapon we want to fuse. Oh, it's showing the one that's equipped, that's why. Uh, I think what we might do is we'll equip this one. The light skill trident is really cool. Um, the question is, do we keep it or do we fuse something else into it? Because it has a really powerful ability tied to it. So if we select this, we can get reduced damage from lightning, which is very powerful. Um... We're going to do that for now. We're going to see what this does. So it takes it to level 7. Um, we're just going to do fuse the two weapons together because I just want something... Yeah, we want reduced light. So it's now a level 7 weapon. It's 43 damage, which is quite impressive. And... Is there any other abilities we have? Damage to mid-air enemies. Mid-air attack damage. Oh, these are different. They're a little bit different. So this one is KO, which we don't really care about. But we want to fuse the one we have equipped. And we want to see... So if I select this, this, this... Uh, will it show me? So let me just look at these again. Mid or attack damage. So that could be useful. Dash attack damage. Hundred or plus two damage percentage for every hundred KOs, which actually does happen a lot. I think we're gonna wait because what we can do is if we fuse items that have similar abilities, such as the dash attack damage, we actually can get items that end up having, like, maxed out percentages of things like that. Um, but that's what we're going to do for now. There's a different, totally different thing that we want to do, which is we can actually do something. A military training camp. And if we have enough rupees, we can level up uh, Mifa quite a lot. I don't really need to go too far. I don't want to really dip below a thousand rupees, so we're just going to level up her twice, so she's a little bit more powerful. As we know, that there's a challenge specifically for Mipha. So it has to be Mipha, and we can give her something. We can do, like, damage negative 50%. Thank you, Tapio. I am interested, <laughs> although I don't think I can right now. Um, but thank you for the offer, Tapio. Uh, let's see here. What do I want? Perfect dodge timing window plus 5%. Or damage. Well, we'll increase damage.
So this is a challenge for just Mifra. Mifra? God, I still don't understand the name. <clears throat> so. Um. Yeah. Been a day. Spent probably two hours trying to set up new light, smart light bulbs to our uh, Alexa. And it was kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Like, not the easiest thing to do. Um, Pardon? Swift Spear of Azora. So I do like this, the way the spear looks. This is another capture thing. And we have a very powerful spear. There's, it's got some range stuff. So we're definitely having to capture more control points like last time. Oh, actually, no, we don't. We need to get to that little red... Um, head for target position. So I'm guessing we have to head towards the bottom right. Oh. Oh, yeah. So they're actually the 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 other cool thing about the combat is you do have access to kind of the puzzly abilities from the main Breath of the Wild game. And ooh, we got a lot of different stuff. And the awesome thing about it is that you actually use it as part of your combat. They they can actually be used to solve puzzles, sort of, but it's more like an enemy will telegraph a weakness over their head and you have to figure out which of the different things you need to equip or use in the middle combat. So if I fight this guy, there's a chance he might want to use uh, a charge attack against me, which in that case I have to create like little water cubes or ice cubes. So he wants to use this thing, which is time... oh my god, why? I don't know what happened there, but like it kind of didn't freeze on me, it just didn't seem to let me run into anything. So we dealt a whole ton of damage, we got a whole bunch of stuff, and we need to keep making progress because we don't really want to waste a whole lot of time. Yeah, it's, it's a little funky when I turn corners and stuff with the screen tearing, but, you know. Um, it's a casual stream. This isn't our main stuff, so. We're just gonna kind of accept it. Oh god. So we have a minute to defeat whoever we need to defeat. Which is that guy. Actually, there's two of them. We got a flourish that we can use. Oh boy. So, the only thing I don't like about the targeting camera is that it's not the easiest thing in the world. Oh, and nope. Don't know why I used the bombs, because they're supposed to use ice. And there's. Oh, there's a mag. We're just going to use the ultimate. This must look like very overwhelming, but it's actually not when you play this game. You play Hyrule's Age of Calamity. So that actually worked out pretty well. Except not when there's three enemies at once. Oh, the timer stopped, which is good. I think that happens occasionally if you are 
I don't understand why it's like doing the weird charge thing. Um, oh, also, we can eat apples, which... We used the ice that time, but we still got hit with a weapon. We killed one of them. We killed the other one. Even though we fell on the ground and collapsed. That's funny. So that wasn't too bad. Got another weapon, Traveler's Spear, attack range plus 4%, which could be useful. We got a Kakariko Kodachi, and some more rare materials again, which is awesome. You can use amiibos in this game as well, but they don't do a whole lot other than just... Actually, I don't really know what they do. I don't think they give you costumes. Maybe they do. I have some, but I, I'm not going to dig them out right now. We finished that. Uh, any of the pulsing icons are the ones that we have enough materials to kind of unlock. And it doesn't look like there are any. I mean, there's this guy up here that we could do, which... I don't really like the Divine Beast missions because I find that they're a little tedious. Um, like, it's cool that you can control this sort of mecha zord thing in a Zelda game, but it's also kind of not really that great. Whole bunch of stuff down here. So this is a time limit one that also requires... actually doesn't require any character, but we might as well play as me for it to, to level her up. She tends to be a kind of weaker character. And I think this time we're going to give herself more experience. That's that's what this game is. It's just a series of challenge missions. There are, there are story cutscenes and stuff, but I don't really... I want to clear out all of these challenge missions first before I make progress. This game is probably very easy to 100%, but it probably will take a long time, which is, you know, always a good thing to squeeze out as much value out of a game as possible. Um, yep. So we've been playing for almost an hour, which isn't too bad here. Right. So yeah, this is, I think, one of the... maybe the main map? So it's giving us... Oh, that's kind of... Oh, shit. I think I know what mission this is. And I also think we chose the worst possible mission to do. If I'm not mistaken, this is a very difficult um, one to play. And I think we're going to back out of it because... This is the one that I've been actually stuck on for a long time. Which I've been trying to like do all these side stuff first to, to gain enough levels to take it on. This would be one where you probably would want to use Link. Um, for the most part. So let's let's not do that one. Can we mark this with anything? No. That's just taking us to a different. So we don't want to do that. Echoing footsteps, not the thing that we want to do. Messengers, escort. Outpost defenders. So these two probably would be the ones I would want to do. 
Uh, speaking of, I think we should switch to Link. Because he is our strongest character. And we can equip him with some cool costume stuff. I had him for the in the knight costume for the longest time, and then I kind of went to his champion's tunic. Uh, but I think I want... Actually, the knight costume was what you started with, so I think the champion's tunic was the newer thing. So maybe we'll go with the... Yeah, maybe we'll go with this stuff. It looks cool. I don't know if the armor actually does anything, if it really does give you protection against anything. This says, Flame Breaker Armor, armor crafted by Gorons of, Heli of Helions, curious enough to visit a Goron city. It's made of the highest quality rocks, offering protection against magma and the like. So yeah, I don't know if you have to have all three pieces, or if you only need the existing armor pieces. Maybe you need the set. We have been using the spiked Boko Club. Um, but we do have the Master Sword. Which is really awesome. We haven't fused anything to it yet because we kind of eh, don't really know <laughs> if we want to. Uh, I mean, the, the the wood training sword we got from having the demo save um, does have a really powerful unique ability, which is the yellow one. So I feel like that could be really useful if I were to fuse it to the master sword. But I just don't know if I want to do that yet because if, once I do that, I won't have my fancy wood sword anymore. And also, I don't really have a whole lot of other stuff here. There's dash attack damage, but I never, I don't really like um, abilities that are just like situational. Like, chance to automatically guard plus 10%, that's a really good ability, right? And if you attach it to one of the most powerful weapons in the game, that to me sounds like a really nice combo. Maybe we will do that. At least fuse that one together. Because I feel like that would be not not a bad idea. So we need to go to the blacksmith. Use weapons. I really do like the sword, but at the same time, I don't know if collecting weapons like collecting weapons in the previous Hyrule Warriors was really cool because they were each uh, had unique profiles and. Uh, the, the way that they did weapons in that game was very different to this one. So yeah, the first ability it would get would be... Guard ability plus 10. And then... The next ability we add to it would give it... Ooh, you know... The Halberd isn't a bad idea now, is it? Although the Halberd is level 40. Monster part drop right. Attack speed plus 4. So the only problem if we fuse that, we won't have... Oh, you know what? We'll just, we'll just do... We're just going to do the level 10 option. We're just going to fuse the two weapons, because I just want that guard effect. <laughs> cool. So the next time we fuse the Master Sword, it will actually gain its second ability. So I think that's that's pretty good for prepping our character. I do also want to save. Manual save. Just to make sure. So I've been playing it for a decent length of time, you know, a couple of hours. I hear that this game can be, like, a 40 hour to 60 hour long game, depending on all the stuff that you can do. There's mystery item. And I'm not too concerned about leveling him up, I, you know, maybe I'll just increase his movement speed. Because I know that he, he, oh, you know what, I do want to change the weapon, I forgot. So I want to change it to the Master Sword. Onwards. Oh, 
I got the uh, the whole um, thanks to my wife a uh, Dragon Ball Z manga collection. Which I didn't realize it was only twenty six volumes. I always thought that the mon there was like a zillion Dragon Ball Z mangas. Um, and man, they're they're actually not bad to read. Um, it's funny because like I'm really attracted to like the art in the manga. That's where I go to. And the fact that it is so similar to the show is actually really interesting. I always thought that the show took on different um, design elements. But I guess because it is by Kyoto Toyama that, um, that it just looks a very specific way. Ha! Messenger's Escort. So I'm guessing we have to protect this guy. So we do have special armor. And we do have auto guard. And I guess all we're doing is making sure that the guy doesn't die. Oh. See, so bad at timing these. Wants well, the timer thing. Nice. Can't tell if our guy actually took damage yet or not. But we did protect him. Nope. If he did take damage, it was like a very small amount of damage. There's a lot of cool secret unlockable characters in this. Um, ones that I know about because I looked into it, so I kind of spoiled that for myself. But it is cool because initially I'm like, oh man, does it only have eight characters compared to like the zillion that the original Hyrule Warriors had, even base game without any of the DLC? Um, so anyways, about that Dragon Ball Z manga, the art is very good. Uh, the the dialogue is, is pretty close to like the show, right? The one thing I kind of do appreciate is that I know that there's not going to be any filler compared to like the actual show, because the filler was created strictly for the anime whenever they got too, um, not too far ahead, obviously you can't get too far ahead, but like whenever they realized that, oh shit, you know, we're pretty much on par with where the manga is right now. What do we do? Because the next volume hasn't been released yet. That time we do that. I'm not sure if it has gone away, but it feels like the screen tearing is gone. It almost looks like it. Oh, ice attack. Anyways, real huge fan of Dragon Ball. Um, Dra sorry, Dragon Ball Z specifically. Um, I also do own all the anime volumes of Super, anime volumes of Super, which is really awesome. Although I don't think Super, no, nope, screen tearing is still there. I don't think Super is actually over. It is kind of on a hiatus, but it has been on a hiatus for a few years now. Like, I want to say two or three years now, technically. Even though, like, the debut of the anime, or the last episode of the anime, I think was only like a year and a half ago for North America and, uh, you know, for the translation and stuff. But the show has been on hiatus for at least three years, I want to say. So that didn't really work out how I thought. We're locked on. We get to do a rush. These guys aren't terribly hard to, to beat, they're just damage soaky. Oh. Let's do an ultimate. 
Anyhow, so Super has had a movie that, um, the Brawly, which was really good and is kind of like a, a sequel to the anime. I totally expect that whenever they decide to do the, I guess you can call it season two. I actually don't really know how it works out because I don't know if they arbitrarily decide which volumes equal what seasons, because there's definitely, like, particular story arcs, right? But I kind of think because even though there's been 131 episodes, um, which sounds like a lot, it really isn't. And on top of that, you know, the way that the series ends, or the way that Super ends, doesn't really feel like a... And there we go, we did it. Hello, Nozomi. Thank you for following the channel. Or the, the Twitch, I should say. This is a casual Saturday stream. So it's, I'm not really playing from the beginning of the game, although I don't know if you've been lur lurking or, or watching or, or whatever. Uh, don't think there's really anyone here right now. Most of the people that are regulars on this uh, stream, I, I feel, are probably still at work or otherwise busy. So yeah, that was the one that unlocked a bunch of more challenges. We did unlock some hearts. Uh, does it say which character? No, it's just a generic damage reduction, I guess. Oh. Sorry, I had to delete the comment because we're you're not supposed to actually mention people's names, only their handles. That's okay. Um, but, yeah. They're, uh, doing something. So. Don't know, really. How are you doing, Nozomi? Uh, I figure you're someone who I know, but no, don't tell me your your actual name. Yeah, that's okay. Guessing game. I I think I might know who you are, but I'm not gonna say it obviously. Uh, no, I think they're probably working and busy. Um, but that's okay. Uh, oh boy. God. When you put me on the spot, it's very hard to actually think of names right now. Um, give me a second here. I'm honestly, like, drawing a blank right now. It's, it's really dumb. And I'm just having kind of a an aneurysm. <laughs> For once, you've done well. Uh, is there any other unlockables that we have? It doesn't look like it. And the little icon dude wants me to do this. Restricted allies special condition, so I can only play as Link, it looks like. Uh, we can increase our movement speed. I guess we'll just keep playing as Link. Because we want to get those levels and, and do that dumb mission. The Lynels. 
But how are you doing anyways, Nozomi? Yeah? Was it busy today? Yeah, kind of figured. Boxing Day and everything. Is it Boxing Day or Boxing Week? Because I feel like it's Boxing Week. And so it's another escort mission, which is not too bad. I think it's Boxing Week. So we just gotta keep Zelda alive. Which shouldn't be too hard since we have the Master Sword right now. And we're just like tearing through fools like nobody's business. Although, it does look like she's getting kind of lagged behind. Did Christmas go well for you? Pretty much wiped out everyone. So that should be fun. Did Christmas go well for you? Sorry, I, I sometimes I mumble. Him. We have a Yuga Blade Master. I mean, to be fair, I spent most of yesterday evening watching all watching three of the Sharknado movies and I gotta tell you they're there's some they're a treat for some people I guess like they're funny and the cameos are really weird it's like a bunch of people that that I like that show up in cameos or recognize at least because they're popular enough you know Famous people. And it's just a very strange ordeal. The fact that, like, the third one... Or, I think the third one or the second one? The fact that the second one ends w with the main character, Finn, using a chain and riding... a fish hook chain, riding on a shark's back and then landing on the Empire State Building and skewering the shark on top of it. Like, it's way over the top like ridiculous and the the CG is like in like so bad like it's not even funny well I mean it is funny because it, it is really bad I don't know what's happening oh my god um but the thing that is kind of cool is they do get steadily better in terms of the quality I guess like the sharks still look kind of dumb but like, <laughs> here, I'll give you an example. The first movie, when they're riding in the car, you can tell that they're actually on set. Like, they're not actually in a real vehicle. Oh god. I'm just getting hammered here. You can tell that they're not in a real vehicle and that they have, like, smoke or something around the, ca the car, the chassis, to obscure you from seeing where they are. And the other thing is that that movie the way that the, the the film is cut is like very 
I, I don't want to say like hard to watch, but like kind of semi-random in terms of like how certain scenes are are done. And it's fine for what it is. But this the sequel, Sharknado, the second one, literally the movie title, is vastly improved uh, compared to the original. Like the, the scale of it, the fact that like they're actually, you know, when they're in a vehicle, in an actual vehicle, and driving around, like it's very very good stuff. Um, it's still cheesy as heck. And looks like a made-for-TV movie, which it, it is, I think. But, uh... There's six of them, and I've only seen half of the ones that are out there. So... Goes to show you, Yeah, like... And they all star the same character. Well, the same main character, most of the same cast. It does seem to change a little bit, uh, movie to movie, but... Oh man, I'm just not getting the dodging down. Um, but it's still, like, it's entertaining, right? Like, it's... By no stretch of the imagination, a fantastic movie, but it is... something that you could have in the background and snicker at a joke or not. No, maybe maybe in the later ones? It'd be cool if he showed up, because I feel like it would be the kind of movie he would. But it's it's not... I don't know. It's cheesy comedy horror? Dark comedy, I guess? Not necessarily, like... I don't know. I, I kind of consider Adam Sandler movies to be more like classic comedy. In, in some ways, like foul humor and all that kind of stuff. Oh shit, Zelda is like getting attacked. I just don't know, honestly. Oh, success, cool. Apparently we did this. But that was fun. Also watched the rest of the Mental Rain movies with the family, so everyone is kind of on the same page now. Which, it's weird because, like, when I watched it by myself, I really liked it. And then watching it with other people, I kind of realized that, like, oh, you know what? This actually does have a lot of slow, extremely slow parts to the episodes. And I still enjoy the episodes because I... The Book of Boba? Yeah. I still enjoy the episodes because I, uh, I'm a fan, right? But... Oh... Um... We got a whole bunch of rare items now, which is cool. But yeah, Boca Bobo could be really awesome. But I am kind of more partial to like the Ahsoka um, show because I, I want to see. I don't necessarily want to see like more. Luke Jedi stuff? Spoilers at this point, but also it's been out for like a couple weeks now. I want to see other kind of like, I want to see a more explorative show. Like, I if, if Ahsoka turns out to be like... Good. Good. I'm just meaning if anyone joins the stream and hears me say that. I know certain people haven't actually seen the ending yet. But what I'm saying is that I want to show the kind of explores the galaxy in kind of like, this is going to sound really weird, but in a way that you would in like a open world video game, like a Skyrim, where you like just observe all these like interesting aspects of the world. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like a lore heavy show is kind of what I'm saying. I don't know how that translates into entertainment. But I feel like you could have that. Um, and then obviously, the big thing that I'm waiting for is Thrawn's return. Because he's no doubt not going to be the big bad of Ahsoka, even though she was looking for the character. 
I'm pretty sure the way that they're going to go do this is the the uh, what is it the the something of the Republic that's the other spinoff um, show that works in tandem with Mandalorian. Um, that the idea is that they're going that Thrawn is going to be the big villain, and um, I think even at the big announcement that they had a, f a few weeks ago with all the Marvel and Star Wars stuff, that they did talk about the concept of doing a crossover event. Which would be cool because that puts it on the scale of like the the Avengers, the Marvel movies, right? Like, if they start doing that to Star Wars, but in TV format, I feel like that's that would be fantastic. The movies are harder to do that because they take each of the trilogies and the spin-off movies. They take place in different pockets of time, and it would it would be a, I f I just feel like Marvel already did it best so far. And I know that Marvel is, is a subset of Disney at this time, but like, I just feel like Star Wars works better as a TV series at this point than it does as a movie series. Because I feel like there's so much, there's huge amounts of lore spread across the galaxy of, of the Star Wars universe. And there's just so much that you can like sink your teeth into and the Clone Wars gave us that Rebels gave us that uh, Resistance kind of gave us that to a, to a much lesser extent and it's probably the weakest of the kind of animated stuff but live action like taking those characters that we grew to love over the course of like you know the past 10 years uh, across the, the many different shows and you know bringing them to live action and giving them their moment and stuff like that's I feel like TV format is where it probably would work best for Star Wars at this point because the prequel trilogies were really good the original trilogy was probably is still considered the best uh, I couldn't see General Grievous I feel like he shows up often enough in Clone Wars that it doesn't really make sense to do a General Grievous show because they're already doing Obi-Wan they're doing, oh my god, Cassian Andor, they're doing um, Heroes of the Republic, or New Republic, or whatever it's called. I, well, I, you know, it's just, Grievous is a really cool character, but he's had a lot of screen time, uh, and they, they don't necessarily go too far into his past, and I feel like there's a reason for that, because... You kind of still want the mystery of like, well, is he an android? Is he a cyborg? I mean, he is a cyborg. He has humanoid organs, even if he's not human. And there's obviously a comic book series that does cover a little bit of his backstory as a character as well. So I was really hoping that they would announce a Dr. Aphra um, show. And they didn't, uh, which kind of sucks because... Dr. Aphra sounds like that would have been a super cool way to like explore the kind of both sides of the the war like the Imperials you know the uh, the um, rebellion right like they're she's a character who has like is, is like a darker Han in a lot of ways um, a more archaeological version of Han but like think think in Indiana Jones like how he does things for a particular reason but he's he does do things to save people i guess but he, i wouldn't necessarily call him like an absolute hero he's more of like a maybe not an anti-hero but like close to an anti-hero i guess i just feel like his personality isn't what i would consider to be like heroic right and i feel like dr afro would be that and it would be the coolest way to explore the Star Wars universe because literally her job is being an archaeologist. Also an archaeologist with two murder machine robots, which is really awesome. Uh, don't know what feathers are. Apparently I got feathers. Is there any other things I can unlock? No, there's some challenge stuff still. Oh, is that something? Nope. I have the digital version of the Dr. Aphra comic, like the first issue, but I, I haven't really had time to read it. Or the first series, I, I should say, not the first issue. 
So we still can't do that mission, at least I don't think we can. Um, I think we've leveled up Link pretty far. Do Outpost Defenders. And I think we should select a character. One of our weaker characters and one of our strongest characters. We can do... I think we should select him because I know that we don't really play him a lot. And... Uh, I think we'll do like an experience thing and maybe we'll play... You call this food surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like freaking like ten... Nine, nine or ten like Star Wars shows coming out. The Bad Batch is sort of what replaces Afra to a degree, but we kind of already knew that the Bad Batch was coming. And that is kind of a way to explore the Imperial side a little bit. Um, but the, the interesting thing is it kind of also would tie to Rebels because of the time period that it takes place. Because Rebels is like early, early Imperial era. We're talking probably within the first five to ten years. Uh, I'd probably say that it starts within the first five years of... or starts just after like the first five years or so of the Empire and probably goes... Well, maybe maybe first ten years I should say. And then expands for like a five-year period and then at the, the, the end of the show, I don't know if you watched it, it does do a time skip that kind of takes place after the end of the Empire. So I feel like Bad Batch could be really cool and kind of fill the gaps of that because it could extend from, you know, f mirroring the end of Season 7 of The Clone Wars with all that stuff that happens. Maybe taking place during Season 7, actually, that would be cool. And then extends into uh, Rebels and it could then possibly, you know, continue on for maybe you know, do time skips every season. I could see that being a way to like fill in a lot more information. And I'd be okay with that. Each each season could be like a very self-contained chapter of this group, but also kind of give you larger definitions of what's going on in the galaxy at large. Kind of like um kind of like a a, a more exemplar a more like exemplary concept of like timeline because here's the weird thing star wars doesn't really have a timeline it has a timeline in the sense that there is a chronological progression but it doesn't because it, there is no like date there's like bby and abby which is after the battle of yavin before the battle of yavin but those aren't really like actual timestamps in the Star Wars universe. Those are like timestamps that exist in canon, sort of, but not in canon because they're like these arbitrary placements for time for us, not for people who live in the Star Wars universe. So I kind of wish that they actually had like, you know, this was like a thousand years ago, this was 2000 years ago, this was 3000 so on and so forth like some kind of better scaling of time uh and i think the part of the reason they do that is because they like being able to just not really point out how long specific things take they can just like they'll throw oh between the end of the empire and uh force awakens that's like 30 years and then during the empire i think the empire range for something like 10 to 30 years as well I want to say that that's kind of close to how long it lasted. Maybe more like 20 years, I think. But this idea that like there's really only very few examples of of the calculation of time, right? Sorry, did that sound like way too complicated? Okay. Good. But, but you kind of understand what I'm meaning, right? Like, I wish maybe Bad Batch could do something to, like, make a better uh, understanding of it. Um, oh god. We gotta go this way, apparently. 
We're on a time limit. Defend the outposts at all costs. Oh, we got. Oh, I get it. We gotta switch characters. I'm not really good with Probali. Be still. Like, I, I kind of understand his moveset, but I also, you know, don't really think that bows work really well in an action game like this. Uh, basically, we have to defend these outposts. I can swap between characters that I have in my party. Um, and this game uh, kind of exhibits elements of like a capture the flag. So we just killed the bad guy, we captured the two outposts, but we need to swap back to the other character because we basically just need to survive for seven minutes, less now. So he's gonna use a move. Oh nope, I fucked it up. Um, this game is an action RPG mixed. Well, an action game, hack and slash game mixed with a RTS, and also is a Zelda game kind of, but it doesn't have Zelda in the title. It's called Hi or Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. It's a prequel. A soft prequel to um, Breath of the Wild, and I say soft because I have heard some things that makes this possibly not actually a canonical um, prequel to Breath of the Wild, which kind of complicates things further as to what the point of this game is. I still think it's a fun game, but it's just a game that didn't necessarily have to exist but is fun that it does. I mean, the last Hyrule Warriors game, because this is a sequel of that too, believe it or not, had a female Link called Linkle. And she wield, wield, wields two crossbows and was probably my favorite character in that game. Oh god, I need to use like my... my thing. Yeah, Linkle was the name of female Link. And they don't really say if Linkle was actually a female Link, they just sort of point out that, oh hey, there's this character who looks a lot like Link who's a girl who's named Linkle. Oh boy. So we're gonna swap back to Rabali because I know that Rabali's probably getting his ass kicked. Because my Rivali is very low. That is hilarious. It's also very weird. Oh god. Like, Jesus, there's four Moblins, like, attacking me at once. All of them... You know what I'm gonna do? Ice. Actually, I didn't use eyes. Oh, I got super. Oh god, I'm uh, the the cutscene got all fucky. Also, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh wow, I don't have it anymore. Like, we're getting real Krispy Kreme here. Also, ice. Fuck you. Fuck! I missed it. I don't know how to use this guy. Okay, well that kind of worked. Too easy. Get another 
So the Moblins are all bone, but... Hey, Theory! How are you? How was your... Holidays? How was... How was Christmas? Oh god. Why does Revali have to suck? Cool down. Oh my god. That helped me absolutely no none at all. Oh god. Oh god. I'm getting like smashed with a hammer. I'm getting like completely destroyed. I'm using ice on these guys because fuck these guys. I'm gonna use my ultimate because Jesus Christ, like it's crazy, and I. Oh god. And also, I need to use my apples because I need to not die. Oh, cool, that's awesome. I was gonna ask, have you actually built Gundams? Because you asked me about Gundams before when I started mentioning them. But I'm just curious, have you built Gundams before? Oh god, god. Jeez, 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 jeez. Why? Why does Revali have like the shittiest... Why? Oh my god. Okay, ultimate again. Uh, I can tell you that my new favorite Gundam that I want, that I don't own yet, is they have what is called an entry level, um, Be still. they have an entry level Gundam model kit that's called, uh, well, it's the entry level, entry grade RX-78 model kit. The reason why it's cool is because it is very close to being like a Lego set. Like, it's not Lego. I'm not... It's a model kit still. But it's very close to being a Lego in the sense that it's extremely simple. Uh, it's like... I want to say probably within port fees, like... If you go to Chibi's or something, if they have one, it's probably going to be like 10 bucks. It's a $10 model kit. All you need is a lining pen. Um... Probably like some, well, you don't need paint because it doesn't actually require any stickers, which is awesome for like a $10 kit, um, considering that there are $100 kits that still require stickers. Oh my god. Still have to survive. Anyways, $10 model kit of Granddaddy Gundam, and uh, if you were to, you know, dress it up nice, you know, do the panel lining, um, top coat it, it would look absolutely slick. And what makes it even better is it is so easy to put... Nice, we did it. That's all I had to do. Uh, so easy to put together, um, which makes it fantastic for customizing. Because the biggest thing is that... I I do have like a I have I have everything like I got a airbrush I have <laughs> just got to know them yesterday um, they're they're good folks I actually have won two three competitions technically um, two competitions sorry that Chibi's ran when they were doing Kelowna Fan Expo I won. Not this previous year, but the year before, and the year before that. And the first time that I won, I won a real grade um, double O Gundam model kit, which is like worth 40 bucks. So that's pretty awesome. And it was the speed building competition, which means that you just build real fast, and you have to finish it, I think it was four hours? Chibis is a fantastic place to go to, and I feel like of all the local places to support, I feel like they are probably like a really cool place uh, to go to. Um, anyhow, so that was the first competition, Speed Build. Um, they did a time extension twice because they started late. 
and I was still able to finish the model kit within the original prescribed time of four hours, even though I did also technically start a half hour later than the, the start time. And I did like just a real basic model kit, and I just built it real good, real fast. Good. Awesome. Uh, then the other thing was is that my the, the competition year and a half ago that I entered, the last one I did, was also a speed build, but I got a little bit more creative this time, but also went to the Granddaddy Gundam, and I did that, and I actually won a real nice prize for like, that's probably worth $100, like a, a master grade model kit, to, and then I got put into a draw and won two draw prizes, one of them also a master grade model kit, both of them special editions that comes with a bunch of extras. One of them is a titanium, uh, titanium coated uh, unicorn banshee Norn, I think, uh, Gundam unicorn. But that's awesome. Are you going to be buying Gundams there or are you going for something else? It is. It is. I, st I still have both because I haven't built them yet. The other one that I got from the draw was the Des the, the, the Destiny Gundam, the um, Extreme Blast Destiny Gundam, which is an older Master Grade, but it comes with like all these fucking cool like effect parts and everything and like, even though I'm not really a fan of the Destiny Gundam design, like I feel like it's such a cool kit, despite being older, that it's gonna look fucking awesome when it gets done. I also have a couple of Hello Kitty Limited Edition Gundam model kits. One of them is a Haro, which looks like Hello Kitty, and the other one is a SD Gundam, which are basically like chibi Gundams, um, that comes with a Hello Kitty, and you actually build the two separately and then combine them together. There's tons of all kinds of stuff. The important thing to know is that um, all the Gundam model kits are broken into grades, so high grade is one 144th scale. It's your baseline. They're they're among the cheapest uh, model kits to get. Um, I should say also SDs are actually cheaper probably, and SDs range from anything from like these crazy like Asian inspired uh, armored little like chibi Gundams to like more mature looking ones and stuff. I like SDs actually. They're they're it's weird. They remind me of McDonald's toys, even though they aren't crappy but they just remind me of like being a kid and like getting like something really cool like when they used to do like bionicle stuff for mcdonald's and those were really awesome uh they remind me of those so that's why i like them the uh sds i think are technically 144th scale sort of but not really where is chibis chibis is but like okay I'm not going to say where I live, but Chibi's is behind the Wendy's and... Um, or are you referring to my Gundams? I'm kind of confused. Can you elaborate your theory? Anime stuff is always cool. Within reason. Some anime stuff I think is like a little bit chunky and too expensive, but... I feel like the, the model kits are pretty cool. I even... I don't even know what you just said, because I barely understand Japanese. Where are the Gundams? Uh, they, like, in the store, they're actually in a separate section. So when you walk into the store, there's like a separate area, a very large area that's kind of down a ramp and it's like an entire half of the story is just Gundams. But m the ones that I have personally, I just kind of have in a box. <laughs> um, but I do have some of mine in display cases, the ones that I have built so far. Um, one of the coolest ones that I've done... That's from an anime? I've... I don't know. I've watched hundreds of anime and I couldn't even tell you what some of the main characters' names are because I just... They all blur together at some point. I'm old, right? Like, I... When I was a teenager, I have probably... I watched at least anywhere between 100 to about a thousand different kind of anime. 
a lot of them being Gundam, you know, but I just don't, you know, remember a lot of this stuff. I haven't really watched a whole lot of anime in a, in a while, honestly. Um, I still like anime, I just always feel like there's something else that I need to be doing. They do blur together. A lot of them are, like, very similar. Uh, my favorite anime is... I... Okay, so I, I want to say Dragon Ball Z, but I feel like that's not really true. Dragon Ball Z is, like, a good, campy, like, popcorn kind of anime to watch. So it's probably my second favorite. My first favorite... Oh god. I'm trying to think, because I, I feel like I own it. I want to say that I own it. I... I would probably say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The original Full Metal Alchemist is really good too, but like Brotherhood just kind of shows you more of the world than the original one does, and it's also much more closer to the manga um, that it's based on. So I, I might say like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. One Punch Man is good, but it, it falls into the same line as Dragon Ball Z for me, where it's like, I don't think it would ever be my favorite, even though it is an anime and manga and everything that I really love, because I grew up with it. But like, I, I don't know, those those two are like, those are like popcorn, like, hey, I want to lay and sit on the couch for like a day and just watch something like pretty mindless. And even though it does sometimes have a cool story to it. It's it's like not, you don't really have to care about the contents too much. Um, Frieza is, however, my favorite character. Bleach is pretty good, but it did get really weird after like season six or something when they did the whole like filler vampire thingy. Yeah, One Punch Man's humor is really good. Um, oh, actually, I think there's an anime... Yeah, but like, I kind of feel like I have to, sort of. I actually forgot. There is probably an anime that I like a little bit more than Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and that would be Fairy Tale. It's actually an anime that my wife, uh, who doesn't really like anime, really liked. Sakamoto? No, I don't think I've heard of that. But anyways, yeah, like, Fairy Tale is such a good anime. Fairy Tale. So it's basically every all the main characters are wizards, you know, living in a magical world, and they all have different powers and abilities, and it's very Dragon Ball-like in the way that, like, they have superpowers and all this kind of stuff, but, like, they... Oh, are you talking about the main character of One Punch Man? I'm a little confused. Do I want more rupees? Maybe. <sighs> Is that a quote? I'm a basic person, so I'm easily confused. Leave it to me. I'm Sakamoto? <laughs> Haven't you heard I'm Sakamoto? That's the title. Oh. You know what? what's an old anime that I never finished watching, but I always, always, always heard people go crazy about it, and that's uh, Ryuni Kin Kenshin? I think that's the name of it. Ryun Ryuni Kenshin, I think. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it's like a guy who is a samurai, who is very, very powerful, but doesn't kill people, at least not on purpose. 
like he uses the flat end of his sword because he's sworn off uh, killing people, I guess. And it was really cool, but it was kind of like, you know, boring earlier on. I do hear that it does get more interesting later on. Oh, girl's all right. Sorry, my computer just told me that because whenever I stream, I record the the video at the same time. And my computer's like, "Oh shit, bro, we don't have enough space to record the rest of the video." That's fine. It, it's still gonna be on um, Twitch. So, Ghost Fighter sounds familiar. I actually, okay, this one is like not old old, but. Have you heard of Black Lagoon? Oh wow, we're we're really just balling it up here. God, what is there? There we go. That's what I wanted. But are you talking- let's, like, I haven't really seen the end end. I saw the end of my favorite part of the, the series. I think. Uh, Black Lagoon is pretty cool. It's... Um, basically a Japanese businessman I, I don't really remember the actual episode that I was at. It wasn't the end end, it was like the end of the... Um, after the vampire stuff, but uh, bef just as he loses his powers, or his r original powers and gains new ones. That's that's when I kind of stopped, because I was kind of like, oh wow, my, my, my favorite character lost his really awesome powers, and now he has this weird other powers. No. Whoa, I did not know that she could summon a fucking frog. That's awesome. Naruto's pretty okay too. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know, like... The... The final arc just seemed very different from the rest of the- it, it actually seemed like fill, filler, to be honest. Like, that's- that's how different it was for me. We kind of poorly did that and almost died. That's fine. Well, I'm glad that the ending was good. It just, the, the beginning of it was like, kind of put me off a little bit. Like, I've never finished Naruto. I watched most of, well, I wouldn't say most of it, but I've seen like, probably 80% of Naruto. 
and I only missed the last 20% and I have no idea what even Road to Baruto or any of that stuff is like either. Like, never seen that. I've seen the Funko Pops, I've seen like, I, I kind of know what it's about, sort of, but like, I don't, haven't touched that stuff. Anyways, the three, sorry. The uh, the Black Lagoon is a Japanese businessman gets um, kind of wronged by his employers and ends up being abducted by a group of mercenaries. And he finds out that his employers basically don't give a shit about his life and think that he's such a lowly employee that, you know, if he were to die, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to them. And he ends up kind of having a breakdown and essentially like joins the mercenaries and becomes a mercenary with them. And he starts off kind of timid and still can like holds on to his humanity for the most part. And, and he kind of does throughout the whole series, but it's really good because it's very dark, but it's still funny. So I guess it's like a dark comedy about mercenaries, but it's just a really, really good show. And they did two seasons. I think. Oh, oh, you know what another one is that's that's not old again, but kind of old er, and it was from the mid 2000s. And that was the not the Ghost in the Shell like original movie, but the Ghost in the Shell uh, standalone complex anime, which I thought was so good. And I actually own both seasons. Um, and that's a real good show. Although the first few episodes of season two are kind of weird, and then eventually you kind of clue into like what's going on and stuff, and you're like, oh. Uh, I haven't. I think I heard of it. I think we also have a... You weapon? I haven't seen Food Wars. Have you guys seen Cell at Work? No, no, Black Lagoon, not Blue Lagoon. Black Lagoon. <laughs> I don't know, I used to watch the Food Network all the time. Cells at Work. It was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is, but it's... <laughs> yeah, I haven't finished Cells at Work either. But it's like so freaking funny. It's basically... Um, for, your, for you, Nozomi, it's... Trigun is awesome. I really like Trigun. I also like Gungrave, but Gungrave is also kind of a weird anime because, like, it changes. Uh, what is it? Halfway into the series, like, you basically are looking at this character's perspective in the past. Of course, I've seen Trigun. Trigun is like classic. Gun sword? Does that ring a bell to anyone? Sorry, I'm mulling about while I'm reading you guys, your guys' comments. How am I the only person you've talked to that has seen Trigun? Trigun's like classic. Johnny Young Bosch? Like one of his earliest like voice roles in anime? I feel like that was. I think that's that's true. Yeah, it is so fucking good. Even the movie that was like the the sort of anniversary movie thing that came out that was okay, but not great. Like, I really wish they would either remake that series or continue that series. Oh, fuck. I backed out of the what we were doing. Okay. Let's go through this again. I don't care what I use. I just want it to use all. Awesome. And then we gotta move on to this side, and we just 
pick a thing, use something we have a lot of, just use all, confirm. Mm -hmm. Trigon is really good. Oh, that is sick. Royal Halberd? That is awesome looking. It's real cool. That's where I grew, up, grew to be a fan of Johnny, Johnny Young Bosch. I actually... <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is really good anime. It's not. It's it's one of my favorites in terms of like classics that are like really good to go back to if you feel like you don't really know what to watch or what to do. Uh, in theory, have you seen? I'm trying to think of one that I have. Cowboy Bebop. Like that's a classic. That's like a super classic. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop. I have the whole Blu-ray collection. Except I don't have the movie that is a weird non-canonical movie that still sort of ties into the anime, but kind of doesn't. Like, uh, I mean, you could probably find it on Crunchyroll. Or if you have Funimation, if you subscribe to Funimation. Cowboy Bebop is so good. Space Cowboys, literally that's what it is. And and it's honestly like a really cool world. Uh, yeah, I used to watch anime on sketchy-ass anime websites, but I kind of stopped. Like, at this point, I own, like, you know, Disney Plus. I have a Crunchyroll. I don't have a subscription, but I have, like, the freemium one where you have to watch the ads and stuff. Um, I have... Anim or, um, Amazon Prime, I have, you know, Netflix, I think. Um, the one thing that Disney Plus needs to release are the Miyazaki films, because that makes so much more sense. So I've, I've never watched Detective Conan except for when I was, like, real young, and I'm talking, like, you know, when YTV was still doing their thing with a lot of anime. They, they might, I haven't, I honestly have not owned Cable for like forever. Um, and I remember De Detective Conan being on there a couple times, but I never really, you know, it was like, okay. It was all right. Uh, Cowboy Bebop classic, Trigun classic. I'm trying to, uh, Ghost, Ghost in the Shell to me is a classic. I love Ghost in the Shell. I even think that the live action movie was pretty good and wish that they would do a sequel, even though prob they probably won't. Like, it was a pretty good thing. It was a little bit of a mishmash of different eras into one, but... You can get ad blocker. Ad blocker kind of fixes that for you. Crunchyroll will, will let you watch a lot of stuff for free. Um, here's a non-anime, but very anime thing to watch, which is Last Airbender. So, Ethereum, I'm not sure if you watched Last Airbender. I think you have. I feel like you would. If you haven't, it's like a really good series. Not anime, but very close to it. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the icons to see what, what we can do next, because I really don't want to do this. Fuck it, we'll do it. Good. I haven't finished Legend of Korra, but I own both on Blu-ray. So, I'm really... It, it's weird to, like, we watched it as a family. And Amanda... Um, and I kind of really grew to like it. And the rest of my family kind of sort of liked it. My wife more so than, or my wife actually did grow to like the series. But then when we tried to watch Korra, no one liked it. Except for me, I liked it still. Everyone else was like, this this stuff is not for us. <laughs> and it's sad. 
Uh, Legend of Korra is really good. It's like steampunk last airbender. Like, how could you not like that? How could you not like it? Oh god. Uh, give it a shot. Um, there's places. I think you can watch it on... No, you can't see it on, on Netflix. Never mind. Uh, I... I kind of like how structured The Last Airbender is. And I heard that, yeah, the seasons in Korra are not really tied together that deeply. Like, they do sort of blend together, but not as much as the Last Airbender ones did. But I'm kind of okay with that because there are a lot of TV shows that are like that. We're just, we're just a Gundam right now. I mean, we're not actually, but we, we kind of are. We need to kill 2,000 more people. Which they're all over there. Um, I'm trying to think of other classics. I already mentioned Full Metal Alchemist being classic to me, at least. Even the original version of the series. Um, Inuyasha. I've never seen the final season. I've seen everything except for the final season, and I'm kind of partly scared to see the final season. Because I really, really used to like that show. I think I have the first four seasons on DVD somewhere, but I just remember like being really big into Inuyasha for a long time, because that was like my first, one of my earliest exposures to anime. Um, my oh Gundam Wing, Gundam Wing is a classic too. Like that is what got me into Gundams. And like the anime is just so it, it's it's a little dated in terms of some of the dialogue, but it's just such a good romp. I do too, honestly, but uh, I also probably have just as many unfinished video games, and I mean it's hard to say which is which is going to get priority. Yay, we did it! We did the thing. We made, finished the mission that I wasn't really excited about doing. Zomi, you still hanging out? Did we unlock enough materials for more unlockables? Oh, we have a different... We have two missions here. Ooh, he's not high enough level. Oh yeah, what was I gonna do? I was gonna do the thingy. I was gonna level him up. I was gonna speed level him. Do we have enough rupees? Yeah, we do. He gains an extra heart. And now he's as high as Link is. You know what, we we should probably level up Rivali because he's going to be such a pain in the ass to level up normally. I feel like the rest of these characters are going to be relatively easy to play and level up. 
But Revali, like, do not like playing Revali. Uh, we should also do a fusion, maybe. See if we can make more powerful weapons. Uh, I mean, that's a level 8 weapon. Let's select this, this, these, this, this, this. Use all that shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then select it again. And wow. Still not enough to level it up, huh? Mm -hmm. To level 10. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you should be ready for that quest, which was. Where was it? Oh! And is it just what happens? <laughs> yep, all good. I actually haven't even had dinner yet. But that will be a thing later. Oh, that wasn't even restricted. That's dumb. But... What we are going to do is swap out this character for this one, because I know that we're not going to really use him. Or it much. Uh, we do want experience. Yeah, we want experience. Onward. Basically playing until my wife is off work, essentially. I I did. I did start early. I just wanted to kind of get as much gaming done as possible. Yep. Still got to sort out a couple problems, though. Like, storage... Apparently storage capacity ran out on my main hard drive, so I have to figure out what to do about that. Because otherwise I'm not going to be posting stuff to YouTube. Yes. We're playing as my favorite character, Urbosa. She's got a longer lightning bar. Urbosa's probably the best girl of Breath of the Wild. Age of Calamity, I should say. She's in Breath of the Wild, but like, not really? And there's no timer, so we can just mash, 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 mash. Help our little guy level up. This is the first letter start with J. Huh. Okay. Um. God, I'm just having like such a dead brain right now.
Um, well, if it's close to J, then L. Like, <laughs> this is a really bad guess. Okay, one more, one more. A. Did you hear that? I, I guess the, the last F, the last one is A. That's what I'm guessing. Oh my god. So bad. Lo 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 lo. Yep, uh, I stream on Saturdays and Tuesdays. Tuesdays it's usually around 7-ish that I start. We only started extra early today because it is a Saturday. Don't mind Zetabot. It's meant to respond to certain things. See ya. Thank you for watching. It was pretty entertaining talking about it. Talking about anime, which I don't get to do often. Oh wow, I'm not even actually at the right place to... Oh god. I was not even at the right spot. Captured a completely arbitrary capture point that doesn't really matter. Um... Yeah. I, I watch a lot of anime. Sure do have a collection. I've never seen all of My Hero Academia. Which is probably one of my, like, more recent favorite anime, but I, I haven't finished it. Like, I, I watched a lot of Season 2, but I, I was kind of, like, partially disappointed with Season 2 because I felt like it had a lot of um, tournament kind of stuff. Um, which wouldn't normally bug me, but it was kind of like, well, it's a superhero anime. I kind of wanted more superhero stuff, but it is also very comedic. Not unlike One Punch Man, but less so. It's a definitely a more serious show. But, uh... 
you know. It was still really cool. I do own season one. Uh, they, I can't remember, they come with like a little figure or a sticker or something? There was something that it came with that was like really cool. I can't remember what it was. Um, I think having like an action figure of the main character in the co in his costume uh, would be really cool. So we did one capture point, an actual one that we needed to do. Oh. Excuse me, sorry. And um, moving on to the next one. Uh, probably next Saturday I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream Yakuza Like a Dragon, which I'm extremely excited to do because it is a new game. I mentioned it earlier, but I don't think anyone was watching the stream at that point. But, um, very goofy game, JRPG, but with, like, Yakuza. Yakuza, maybe I'm saying it wrong, Yakuza. A lot of fancy stuff. Just kind of run, 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 run. We don't really care about dealing with these guys. We just want to get to the last section. Oh boy. They are lightning resistant, so this is a perfect match. My perfect, I mean, the most horrible match ever. Should have turned notifications off before I started. I haven't really streamed on the Switch before, so this is relatively a new endeavor. Uh, obviously, it's the same principles apply to what we're doing, but... Uh, oh, look! It didn't look like the, the Smashy Smash worked really well that well on them. It'll be really cool to stream that I don't own is Smash Brothers, because I feel like that would be a perfect game to play online with stream, on, on stream with uh, you guys. But I don't have the game, so that will be something that will happen in the future, I hope. There's also talks of maybe doing a Stardew stream uh, with some friends, some regulars, uh, MC and Link. I think we're going to be winding down pretty quick here. Um, oh, I'm just getting a little bit tired. I have to work tomorrow. So, usually when I get... Usually that's when I want to call it if I get a little bit tired and not quite able to focus as well. It seems I've grown stronger. We made a lot of progress, which is good. Filled out the map, did a lot of the missions that I wanted to do. Um, still have lots of potential stuff to happen. Don't know if we'll do another mission here. Um, probably finish one more mission, depending on what it is. Uh, oh, it's yeah, I forgot. I can just pick a character. We're going to go with... Uh, maybe we'll go with Maraca Man. 
No, he's under leveled. Technically, she is too. Let's go with Blink. Uh, let's give him some protection. Maybe we'll give him a movement speed increase. Actually, you know what? I should be. I should hold that stuff. I have a perfect idea for what I'm going to use those for. We'll use this one. So, we'll move faster, and we'll get this done in the next five minutes or so. And then we'll end the stream. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of people this time. New face, yes. Uh, but I kind of figured that this would be a more casual stream. I think there are some people who are currently just a little bit busy. Oh, it's a timed one, too, so that actually works out. Defeat the training opponent. So there's one. Oh, they're all just gonna show up, like, real close by. Well, that's good. Oh, shit. Make quick work of these girls. We got the Master Sword. There should be another one. Oh, she's over there around the corner. Get me. Come on. Two more. They're in, they're in different, different room. Different space. Over here. And we're gonna make it easier on ourselves by just using this. Done. And then there's probably a boss. Oh, it's a Brosa! Yeah. Sorry, Brosa. You are my favorite character, but you're also probably going to die. Nice. And that's perfect timing. Got more weapons, got more special stuff. I think two and a half hours is pretty good. I mean, that's not terribly much longer than we normally play. Normally we're like around two hours or just over two hours, but 
I also know that after having two days off, I have to work. And usually working just after you've had a few days off can sometimes feel a little exhausting. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Nope, not what I wanted either. Saving. So I just want to see how many hours. Oh, it, it just says... Let's try that again. Oh, I guess it has the time maybe auto-saved already. So yeah, we've been playing for 15 hours and 18 minutes. Not in this stream, but just in general. Uh, but thanks again, everyone who showed up for the stream. Um, it was a good old time, very casual, very spur of the moment. Well, not spur of the moment, somewhat planned. Um, and we'll be streaming our normal Persona 5 on or this Tuesday, uh, which I also have off, which works. And then on Saturday, we will be playing Yakuza Like a Dragon for the first time. I'm not touching the game until we... Until I, uh, until the stream. So, it'll be interesting, because that... I don't know how far we'll really be able to get into the game if we're only playing for maybe two, two and a half hours, but... You no, know, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. Uh, but thanks for watching.